can you can people see that can you give me a thumbs up or something yes yeah that's working great thanks yeah okay right wonderful okay so um so in terms of what we're going to look at um i need to sh no i need to Okay, in terms of what we're going to look at, we're going to start with step and doubles. Um, like I said, what happens in doubles is completely different from what happens in other, other Stedman, so triples and upwards. So we're going to start looking at Stedman doubles, um, and then we're going to move on to uh, calls in Stedman beyond doubles. We will have a little reminder of that stuff that we talked about in, in terms of the different techniques for trying to remember which way to go in, because when you start loading bobs and singles in, um, it becomes really important. So we'll have a little refresh on that. And I think quite a lot of people found that quite useful. Um, and I will, if we have time, um, hopefully try to add a few little bits of snippets of um, calling simple touches of, of Stedman as well, um, in both doubles and, um, and beyond. So let's start with Stedman doubles. So there's a few rules that I might as well just sort of blurt out there in terms of how it all works. So the calls in any Stedman, whether it's doubles or above, the calls um, are do everything that happens on the front in terms of the front three bells doing their quick work or slow work and plane hunting on six and then returning it round and all of that. All of that is absolutely intact and, uh, and nothing changes. So very differently from probably most other stuff that you've rung, the calls, the bells affected are not the bells on the front. They're the bells towards the back of the change, the back of the row. Now, in step and doubles, that means that it's bells four and five, uh, or in fourths and fifths place, which are affected because the front three remain intact. So it means that only bells in fourths and fifths place are affected. Now, because there's only two bells affected, it means that only singles are possible. Um, because uh, if we remember from some of the, the sort of concepts of, of bobs and say bob doubles, there's three bells affected, isn't there? There's a bell making a bob and the bell running in and ben bell running out, there's three bells affected. And in, and in a single, in the concept of, you know, bob doubles, for example, only two bells affected because the bell makes, uh, well, bob minor, the bell, a bell makes seconds um, and, and is unaffected, but the, you know, there's only two bells and three, four. So the same concept here, we've only got two bells to play with in step and doubles, um, so we can only use singles. So there's no bobs in step and doubles, which sounds great, doesn't it? Now a single, uh, so the call, which is a single in step and doubles, is called in the second row of a six. So it's called um, at a backstroke. And it takes effects like any calls, like any instructions in bell ringing, it takes effect two blows later. Um, and so the, the call can happen in any six. And so it doesn't really matter whether it's a quick six or a slow six, it, but you know, that, that's, when, that's when it happens. Um, sometimes I have to say, I tend to call them fractionally earlier than the second row, sort of as we're moving between the handstroke and backstroke, just to give people a bit of warning, because otherwise they go, <gasps> what do I do? Um, but, but, you know, the, the, the correct thing is that it gets called to, to in the second row of the six at the backstroke and takes effect two blows later. Um, when we ring Stedman doubles, the most commonplace way of doing um, a touch is that uh, we, we call a single to swap two bells, the bells in fourth and fifth place, um, and then we ring a whole course and then we call another single to swap them back again. Um, and, and that basically makes 120. And that's just, you can do other stuff as well, but it's quite complicated. But that's the simplest way of doing, uh, of calling 120 or a touch or, or, or ringing um, is to sort of basically swap two bells and then swap them back. Um, and then the the, um, the golden rule, which makes life nice and easy in Stedman doubles, um, is that you go back in. If, if you've been affected at the back, you go back in the same way you came out. So that's lovely. So usually you only get one single at the back. So if you've come out quick, you'll get you'll do you what whatever you do at a single. I'll, I'll introduce you to that in a minute. And then you'll go back in quick. And, and similarly, if you came out slow, you'll do whatever you do at the single and, and then you'll go back in slow. So that's a really nice golden rule um, if, if there's one single at the back. 
So th there's there's reasons about that which I probably won't go into. It's to do with sort of obviously the how long it takes between the sixes alternating. But so that's a nice golden rule. So let's have a look at actually what happens in terms of a single at the back. So there's two things that but basically normally what you'd be doing is you'd be double dodging wouldn't you with a, with another bell you'd be swapping over and double dodging and 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 basically you have to not double dodge you have so you have to stay in one place for, for one blow in order to swap with the other bell so if we look at this um, bell that's uh, in red it's actually the treble it doesn't really matter which which it is it could be any bell so it's it's making two blows and thirds here so it's basically finishing its slow work and it's coming out slow there's a line here because that marks the end of the six and then we go into this next six um, and we happen to it doesn't really matter whether it's a quick six but 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 it is so we go up to so the trebles made thirds on on its uh, slow work on the way out it goes and it goes up to four five and starts to do its four five double dodging up now there's a single called in the second row of the six which is at backstroke and it takes effect two blows later so it carries on at the hand stroke doing its double dodge but rather than going up and doing the second of the double dodges at the backstroke here, here it stays in one place. So it stays in fourth place and in doing so swaps with the other bell at the back, which in this case is the green one, which is number three. And then it carries on finishing the dodge off and then it goes back in the way it came out. So it goes back in slow. And this shape here is called cat's ears. Um, as you can see over here, it kind of vaguely looks like cat's ears. But uh, so it's, it's the first dodge of the normal double dodge. And then you do something different in the middle in order to swap. Are you make fourths and then you go finish off doing the double dodge of the work that would have been that, that, that your other bell, your other partner bell that you were dodging would have done, which is here. And you go back in the same way that you came out. And, and it's called cat's ears. And it's that shape and you just kind of have to memorize it basically it's not too difficult to do you kind of do one dodge stay in fourth do another point actually or some people call it point some people call it snap point at the back to finish off the second cat's ears and then go back in the way you came and if the treble had been coming out quick it's exactly the same shape of these cat's ears as well and the treble would be going back in quick so that's what one of the bell does in the single the cat's ears. Now the other bell works around that. And, and some people call it coat, coats hangers. I have to say, I, I don't particularly associate with that. And when I learned to do singles in Stedman, I didn't kind of call them coat hangers, to be honest with you. I mean, this is the shape of it over here. You're doing your double dodge at the back, you lie behind, and then you do this sort of point here from your first first double dodge down and then you make your place in order to swap and then do another point and then lie behind and do it I have to say coat hangers doesn't work for me the way I think about it is I think I have to work around the, the bell doing the cat's ears if that makes sense so if you can sort of think about that um, that that's the way I do it is I kind of I think about I need to work around that but what it looks like is you've you've been this bell in green here it's been doing its double dodge up it lie behind as normal, start of the new six. Um, this is the hand stroke. It does its backstroke single is called there. So it carries on for the next blow and then it does something different because it takes effect on this, this fourth row of the backstroke here. So it stays lying behind and then it picks up the work of what the treble would have been or the, the partner bell would have been doing. So it goes here and as if it were it sort of shoves it back to doing four five up again so it finishes off the four five up lies behind and does four five down again and that's they're the singles and 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 basically you you kind of just need to learn those two patterns of work so the treble is own or or the, or the bell that does the cat's ears in this case it's the treble is only up at the back for one six it doesn't lie behind and turn around. It's only up at the back for one six. But this bell, the green bell, is actually up at the back for three sixes. So it's actually at the back for quite a long time. 
so so that it kind of feels slightly different in that sense so that that's the work of, of what you do uh, um at a single and in terms of calling it i'm going straight on in terms of of calling it um because I think it's quite important. There's so many times, isn't that you? You know, you're, you're at a, a practice or a Sunday, and you say, "Well, can anyone call it?" And people, oh, I don't know what to do. And you know, and it's just, it's you know, it's not too hard to, to call it. The easiest thing to do, I think, is to call yourself unaffected. And what I've done here is every each of these places in Stedman doubles where there's a green arrow is where you can call yourself unaffected. So you could call yourself unaffected in the second row of the six as you going in to the slow work here. So basically any to anywhere where you're on the front is unaffected and any second row of any six you can shove a single in. Um, as, as you can see here, so you could call it here as you're going in slow for the first time, you could call it here at the end of your first um, whole turn and so on and so on and so on. And I think the easiest one to do is to shove the single in as you're as you're going in quick, which is down here. So um, it's the backstroke just before you're about to lead, which of course is where we put calls in in quite a lot of other methods like plain bob we call it at the backstroke just about you know as we're about to lead so i think that's the easiest place to, if you are going to call stedman is to call it there at that backstroke there and you just go single and you're unaffected and and and, and those two bells swap over at the back now the thing about it is that you have to call it twice so so you'd call it there and then you do another whole course obviously you go up to the back you know go up to the back come down go in slow go up to the back come down and and you have to call it in exactly the same place the next time you do it so two singles in exactly the same place um, on the second row of any six when you're on the front whether it's quick or slow uh, will give you a 120 of, of Stedman doubles if you want to be super clever, um, what you can do when you're doing that um, is you can watch just to double check that the same two bells are affected. You know, you think, right, OK, I'm calling my sound affected here, but actually it's bells four and five that are, uh, that are at the back and affected. Um, and you can just sort of do a double double check the second time round. Are, are is it the same two bells? Yes, it is. Right. OK, I'm definitely in the right place with my call. So um, in this case, if you put if you are on the treble and it, it's going to come one, two, three, five, four, six, um, and then you go around a whole course and then you'll swap those four and five over again and um, nice and easy. And all of a sudden you're calling touches of step and doubles. Another way of calling step and doubles is to call yourself affected. So that means that you um, you're one of the bells doing cat's ears or the one doing the coat hangs or working around the cat's ears. This is quite useful if, as is often the case, you know, you say, let's ring Stedman, who can ring singles? And, and only a couple of people can do it. And, and so what you need to do is you need to call the single when those two people are together. So, and you end up dodging with everybody at the back. You may not know that in Stedman or doubles, but you do end up dodging with everybody um, at the back. So, you know, whichever bell you're on and, and you know, this other per person says, yeah, I can do singles. You just basically wait until you get to the back with them um, and you shove the single in um, at, at the backstroke of the of that six. And then you do a whole course and you wait for them to come back round again. And when they come back, when you're back together with them again, you shove the next single in on the second row of the six and it will come round. Um, you have to, you, you can't tell often in advance whether you're going to be the one doing the cat's ears or you're going to be the one that's already at the back and, and the cat's ears person comes to you, if you like. You, you just kind of don't know. You just have to just be alert to watching that other bell that you're going to call with. And, and then when you're together, you shove the single in and then do it the, the next time round. Um, so so that's that's there's two different ways of, of, of calling step and doubles. The easiest is when you're coming in quick. And then another useful way is if there's only, um, you know, if there's only some people who can ring singles. 
Um, because if you are calling yourself coming in quick, whichever bell you're on, you can't sometimes tell, can you, which who are going to be at the back. So it kind of does rely on everyone knowing what to do. And, and sometimes that doesn't happen. OK, so are there any questions with that? Because that's basically that's basically it um, with, with step and doubles. The key thing is uh, the bells affected are the ones at the back. You can only call singles. It's called in the second row of six. It takes effect the next backstroke, two blows later. And one bell does this cat's ears. The other bell does this thing around the cat's ears, which means it's at the back for three whole sixes. And then both bells go back in the way they came out. And that's how it works. Any questions with that? Anything in the chat? Um, just a couple of uh, observations to add. Um, if you're if you're calling a touch of Stedman doubles and, and you call it in the you call your single too early for, for any reason, any touch with an even number of singles will come round at some point. Okay. So um, oh, right, if, okay. you, if you called That's four singles, for instance, quite randomly, it the, the touch will come round at, at some point afterwards or two singles even with different bells so don't, don't necessarily abandon the touch and in thinking because in if you're going to be affected by a single in the touch that you call um and are are waiting for that for that bell to meet you again for the second single think that you've got to dodge with every other bell in four or five before you get to that point in between the singles. So you will be doing three sets of dodges with unaffected bells between the singles before you meet your partner bell again, if that makes sense. That's really helpful, thank you. Yeah, it's really helpful. Yeah, you won't call it and then suddenly find it comes to you sort of, you know, uh, 15 seconds later, three sixes later, it kind of, it won't be like that. So, good. Any other comments, questions? Okay, so let's move on to um, what happens in calls in Stedman triples and beyond. So what we're about to learn now applies in any number of, any sort of yeah, num number of Stedmans, if you like, uh, from seven upwards. So let's have a look at some of the rules. Um, they uh, so it's the it's the bells in the last three positions of the row which are affected. So in double doubles, it was just the last two bells in fourth and fifth place because um, that's all there was. The, you know, the, the the front three bells doing all their stuff are intact. So the front three bells in triples are still intact but actually so are the bells in four um some of them in four five as well but the but the bells in fifths sixths and sevenths are affected um so it, in triples it's fifths and six, six and sevenths if you were in caters which is on nine it would be sevenths eights and ninths it would be ninths ten elevenths if you were ringing uh step and sinks and, and and so on so it's the bells in the three positions at the back of the row which are affected and uh, everyone else below is unaffected um so 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 the more the more no, the, the higher numbers you ring on <laughs> of course in in, in stedman that sort of you know the less likely you are to be affected in fact in peels of stedman you can ring you can ring and be completely unaffected by um calls at all um in stedman sinks for example and beyond so in you can you get bobs and singles in Stedman, the bobs affect three bells. We kind of covered that a little bit with the doubles, you know, the concept of, you know, you've got a bell staying the same place and two bells swapping. And you get singles, which only affect two bells, just like, just like we've experienced in doubles. Um, and, and that's the same sort of concept as, as, as plain bob as well. Now, very frustratingly, <laughs> where they're called is a different place. So they're called in the fifth row of a six, so at a hand stroke. And they take effect two blows later, um, just, just like every instruction and bell ringing does, um, two blows later at the beginning of the next six. So that's fractionally frustrating because it's, you know, they're called in a different place. So let's have a look at what they look like. We'll look at bobs first. So what I'm showing here, first of all, is this grey block uh, is 
where all the changing around of the three bells um, happens. So we've got, I don't know, let's 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 pick this, let's pick this green line. We've got a bell that's doing um, four, five up. So it's coming up, it's doing one dodge, second dodge. Um, and uh, the call is made at the hand stroke here, which is um, in the fifth row of the sixth. The, 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 the sixth row of the sixth is unaffected, but it, it takes effect two blows later, which is here. So what this green bell does is it, instead of going from four, five um, up to six, seven up, it would normally move up here, it doesn't. It stays in the same place, which we know that um, as making the bob. We, you know, that it's and the, the same concept of of making the bob in uh, in plain bob happens here. You make the bob, you stay in the same place, and you pick up the work of what you would have been doing then. So you start doing four five down, four five down, and then and then off you go in whichever way. We'll talk about that whichever way in a minute. So. Um, so, so this, so the bell that's in four five up. If you're in four five up and a bob is called here, and pretty much towards the end of your last double dodging, you make the bob. You stay in fifth place. You do four five up, four five down, um, and then you actually go in the the uh, the opposite way you came out, which is what you would normally do um, anyway. So you go in the opposite way. So if you've come out quick here, you make the bob, do your double dodge four five down, and go in slow. And in effect, that line is the line of bob doubles, isn't it? So, so, so making the bob here is 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 the line of bob doubles. It's not difficult. You you know you can. That's quite nice and easy to do. And you always just go in um, as normal as you would have done, which is the opposite way. So that's not too bad. We can do that. If we look at the bell, which is higher up in the change than you. Uh, dodging in, in parallel, so actually it's, it's a course bell of yours, uh, which is this red bell here. So this one is doing its double dodge six, seven up. So it does one, two, call is made here. So you carry on to the, uh, to finish the six, that's unaffected, but rather than lying behind, which you would have done, you, you move back, you dodge back, um, to, to sixth place. And you pick up the work that you would have done if you were in sixth place. So you start doing double dodge, four, five, uh, six, seven, up. One, two, and then lie behind. So what you're actually doing is a load of dodges at the back, but a really helpful way to mem memorize how many you've done is to think of them in blocks. So think of them as two dodges for the double dodge. So there's your double dodge as normal, Bob, one dodge for the Bob, and then two dodges for your six, seven up as normal. So it basically kind of shoves you in your line. This six is basically that six up there. It kind of shoves you back and re you repeat the six. But I urge you quite strongly not to think of them as however many that is, six, seven, I don't know how many dodges that is. Urge you to think of them as two dodges, one dodge for the bob, and then two dodges again. Now, of course, very often you actually, in seven triples, you, it's quite rare to get just one dodge. Often you get pairs of bodies uh, dodges bobs coming together so if that happens you do one dodge two dodges as normal for your six seven up bob so you do a dodge for the bob and then you pick up again two dodges for your six seven up bob you do another dodge for the bob and then two dodges for your six seven up and every time there's a bob you <laughs> you keep need to keep thinking of that so there's my two dodges that finishes the six there's the dodge for the bob, there's my two dodges and all the way through and that finishes the six. There's my dodge for the bob and, and so on. Of course, the pattern ends up like a massive, great big long double dodging for, for as many bobs there are. But you need to, you, you must hang on to where the six ends because otherwise you'll make a mistake and, uh, and then it's, so the, and, and the really the easiest way of doing that is to chunk them up, two dodges as normal, dodge for the bob so two one two one for for as many as you need and you must try and hang on to that um because otherwise you just you don't know when to stop double dodging um 
Right. And then, of course, the the other bell that's affected is is doing exactly the same thing, but it's doing it from from the from the um, six, seven down side. So it's doing two dodges. There's the bob that blows as normal. But then rather than going down into four five, it dodges back again um, to start the, uh, the to, for the bob to take effect. It does two dodges. In this case, there's only one bob. So it would then go back down into four five. If there was a second bob, it would do another dodge for the bob and then carry on doing two dodges again. OK. So what have I got on the next slide? Um, if we were doing just to very quickly, if this was step in caters, this is exactly the pattern that you would do. But this place wouldn't be fifth place, it would be seventh place. And then all of this double dodging would be happening in, in eight, nine. OK. Let's talk about singles. In many ways, singles is actually a bit easier. Um, I, I think people panic about singles. And, <gasps> um, but in many ways, it's actually a bit easier. So same thing happens. It's the bells in um, fifths. It's the, it's the last three positions of the row which are affected. So let's call this Stedman triples. So this is the green bell is dodging four five up. And what it does is it makes fifth. So the singles called here, fifth row of the sixth, it carries on to finish the six as normal. It takes effect the next blow here. And rather than going up into six, seven, it stays in the same place um, and then starts doing four five down. And that's actually the same work as the bob, isn't it? It kind of makes the bob, even though it's a single, <laughs> um, in, in this exactly the same way. And if we think about a single in plain bob, that's exactly what happens as well, isn't it? You know, if, you, if you were going to make, if you were dodging three, four up and you make the bob, you make fourths and then carry on. And if you if it's a single, you do the, exactly the same thing. You make fourths and then carry on. So same sort of, you know, there's some similarity there, isn't there? So. If you're dodging four or five up and there's a single, you make fifths, uh, turn around in effect, don't bother going up to the back, turn around in four or five, do your do finish your double dodging and then go, then go in um, and you go in the opposite way as you would normally have done. So it's, it's a carbon copy of what you're doing above. So that's nice and easy to remember. Let's go with the red bell and see what this bell does. So this one, as we know, is dodging six, seven up. So it does one dodge, two dodge. There's the single at hand stroke. It finishes the six at backstroke. And then um, it actually lies behind. And then it dodges six, seven down. So basically, it's unaffected. And the similarity between that and plain bob as well, in that the bell that was going to make seconds in a single makes seconds and carries on unaffected. And that's what happens to this bell as well. It's basically unaffected. Um, and it goes in the opposite way as it would normally have done. So th the only bell therefore that's different is this blue bell. So uh, it does its, it's doing six, seven down. It does, does its double dodge single. There it is at hand stroke, finishes the back stroke. And rather than going down into four, five, it stays in sixth place, turns around and goes and starts all the double dodging at the back all over again. So it basically starts doing its six, seven up, lies behind and, and does a uh, six, seven down. So basically it hangs around in sixth place and starts going through all its uh, double dodging at the back again. And this has similarity, does, isn't it, to the bell in plain bob that makes thirds, turns around and, and, and kind of changes direction. There's some similarity there. Um, if there's no other calls, it also, when, it, when it's his turn, it's turn to go back into the front, um, it goes in the opposite way as it would normally have done. So the nice thing about singles, if there's just one single at the back, is that you, you, it doesn't affect which way you would, you would have gone in as normal. So in a way, I think singles are not too bad. The, the green, if you're in four or five, you make fifths and turn around as you would do at a bob. If you're um, dodging six, seven up, you lie behind as you would normally done unaffected. And it's just this blue bell. Um, it's if you're dodging six, seven down, you make sixths, 
So there's actually fifth, sixth, seventh, and obviously eighth is made at a single. Um, and then you, and that shunts you back to sixes, if you like, and you start your back work again. Okay, and that's it. So there's, there's that, which is the bob, turn around in fist place and do a load of dodging, two, one, two. And a single is the same, turn around in fist place, unaffected if you're lying behind, if you're doing six, seven up. And then it's just this ever so slightly more unusual one of you stay in sixth place and, and you start your back work again. And, and, and that's the single, the work for the single. Now, the problem comes when there's loads of calls back to back and you're at the back. <laughs> Because the problem is, it, it's quite easy in terms of the work you do, but the challenge comes, which way do I go in? <laughs> and um, this is where you have to start ap applying the rules, really, that we were looking at last time. Because you can get quite, honestly, you can get like, Bob, Bob, plain, single, Bob, Bob, single. But, you know, they can just go on and, and you just completely lose track of which six it is and, and, and you, you know, and, and all of that sort of thing. So what we need to do is we need to remind ourselves of some of the um, methods that we were looking at last time about which way do we go in. So, and I, I have to say, I, I, I do this. <laughs> I, I don't try and remember when I'm at the back and there's loads of calls. I just oh, forget that. I'll work it out when I get, you know, I'll use one of these methods and I'll work it out when, when I get, when, when the time comes for me to go in. So if we remember, I think most of quite most of us quite liked this four five method, um, which is um, when you're dodging four five down, your first blow in fourth place. You, um, sorry, daughter's just come in. Your first blow in fourth place. You note which bell it's over. In this case, it's bell A. If you then ring over it um, when you get to thirds place, here it is it means you have to go in slow. If you don't, so here's your blow in, first blow in fourth place, there's ballet. If you get to thirds place and you don't ring over it, you're going in quick. So, so that's, a, that, that's, I think that works for quite a lot of people. Um, another way that we talked about is when you are dodging in four five, if you can try and watch the leading. So here the leading is going hand and back, hand and back, hand and back, which means it's a quick six. So when you're in four five and you can see the leading doing that, it means the next six when you're going in is going to be a slow six because they alternate. And, and, and here you can see them going um, uh, leading backhand backhand so um you know you know that it's a a quick six at the moment sorry i'm sorry bethany can you go sorry she's just telling me that they won three nil at football which is great okay go Sorry, I've lost my tra train of thought. So I think we remembered, you know, so, the, so there's the four, five down and there's the trying to watch the sixes, trying to watch the leading um, as, as when you're in four, five, and that informs what's happening at the moment. And then when it's your turn to go in, you, you know, it's, it's the next, it's the other way around. Um, and then the third um, method that I think people noticed and talked about last time is this bit about um, watching the bell that you're following on the way down. Um, so here, the, the treble comes up to the back and, and, and dodges with the fifth, and then it watches what the fifth does. And when it's in, when the treble's in four five and it sees the, the, the bell in front of it disappearing off, going in quick, it knows that it has to go in slow. Now, of course, this is not particularly helpful if you're at the back, and, and because all your course bells change because, you know, the bell turns around in fifth place and so on. So it's actually not particularly helpful. Um, it's only really helpful if you can spot the bell that's making fifths and turning around. So, so frankly, that's not a massively helpful one. So if I were you, you're probably using one of those two methods um, uh, to, to work out which way to go in. Okay. And then the final thing that I wanted to, um, is there, are there any questions on, on, on that, on either which way to go in or, or, or the bobs and singles in, in Stedman? Um, can you or, just or, or stay on that slide, Julia? Yes. Um, 
um, a common thing that people do wrong at singles is try to make the place either fifth, sixth, or seventh at hand stroke and backstroke. It's actually at backstroke and hand stroke. Mm. Okay. That's a nice helpful point. Yeah, thank you. Um, lots of people try to do that hand stroke and backstroke. Um, if there's a pair of bobs at the back, I'm not sure whether you covered this, but if there's a pair of bobs at the back, then you go in the way you normally would have done otherwise. Yeah. And that's um, the most common touch that is probably called for a relatively novice band, I would think. Yeah, but, we're uh, going to look at the the twin bob concept in a minute, and and okay, and, okay, and, it, yeah, and it is because yeah. it's um because it is least disruptive in terms of uh, which way you go in and out. So if if yeah, Andrew's right. If there's what just one call at the back, one bob at the back what it will do is it, you'll go back in the way you came out if there's a pair or indeed two pairs next to each other i.e four calls and it's a, an even uh, number next to each other four calls or, or or two two bobs or four bobs you'll you'll go in the way you would have done as normal so basically the opposite way um it starts getting more complicated though if there's like four and then a space and then one and then a and, 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 and that's where I, I give up trying to remember and I just wait till I get to four or five. Um, so, okay, so let's have a look at this um, that Andrew um, has kind of led us on to in terms of, of calling Stedman. Um, they, th there are some, some relatively, I mean, this looks quite complicated, this slide. So let, let, let me talk you through it because there are some relatively easy ways to call Stedman. So what we've got on the left hand side is basically the blue line, if you like, of a plain course of Stedman triples and it's written out from the seventh. And then if you can see them in pale green, I think it is, um, are these numbers one, two, three, four. And these are basically the um, the labels of the calling positions, if you like, in Stedman. Um, so a bob at one basically means the bob comes right at the beginning of, of uh, uh, right at the end of, right at the beginning of when you've gone Stedman, when you've, um, uh, which is obviously at the end of this first six. So these are the different calling positions. They're kind of labels. Uh, the, the, cut, the, the numbers in brackets in black are, are, are just the, the, the starting position of, of, you know, the four starts there. So, so ignore those. And then what, what we do is um, the easiest way to call Stedman is it's called twin bob or two pairs of two bobs next to each other. And, and that's nice and easy because as Andrew's just said, is it, it, is it doesn't disrupt the um, throw people in and out of going away that they weren't expecting. It keeps them in the normal pattern of the way that they were expecting to go in. So We've got some, if you wanted to call yourself unaffected, there are a number of places in which to do that and they are labeled here. So calling yourself in position three and four, so putting a bob in, in positions three or three and four here. So basically it's at the end of your four, five down um, as you are about to go in slow here. So it's called S because you're about to go in slow. So the work that you are doing, if you were to put the uh, two bobs in, um, is you, you put it at the end of the four or five down and, and then in the next six, um, which is actually there, um, would be position number four and that's called S. Now the next sort of pair of bobs that you can call are in positions five and six. So basically the next two sixes. Um, and this is called H because you're basically starting to do your first half turn here. So uh, it's called H. So positions five and six is shortened to abbreviated to H. And then the next two positions, which is abbreviated to L because you're doing your last um, half turn are uh, positions seven, there it is, an eight. So that's quite a nice one to put in because it's it's a nice sort of hand stroke just as you're about to start your last whole turn. It's very definite. I quite like putting calls in there. And then as you're going, making thirds on the way out, that's abbreviated to L because you're doing your last half turn. 
And then the final position where you're calling yourself unaffected is when you're going in quick. Um, and it's uh, so it's four or five down again. Um, the bob goes in there, or it could be a single, but let's talk mostly about bobs. The call goes in there, and then it goes in here as you've just led and, and you're just leaving lead. Um, and that's position 13. It's called nicknamed or abbreviated to Q because it's when you're going in quick. So these are four different potential positions that where you could call yourself unaffected. Now, when touches are written out in Stedman, they then use these SHLQ abbreviations. So if we look at this 84, which is basically one course of Stedman, this uh, one course of Stedman, um, don't worry too much about these numbers on the right hand side. It's basically uh, what the, the actual order of the bells at, at the end of um, at the end of one of the sixes. Don't worry too much about that. Focus on the S H L Q. So what it's saying here with a dash, sometimes it appears as, as an X, but with a dash under the S, it means call the S, which if we remember, was two bobs in position three and four there. So call the S. So if you're ringing the seventh, you finish off your, um, you know, go step one, you finish off your, your double dodge at the back, lie behind, six, seven down, four, five down, look, there's the first bob of the S, of, of the pair that makes up the S, and then a six later, there's a second bob, and that's your S done. Now, it doesn't have a pair of bobs for the H, because it's dash, um, so there's no pair of bobs there, but it then says, call a pair of bobs in the L position when you're doing your last um, hole, your last whole turn so there it is there at the beginning of your last whole turn and there's the second bob of the pair as you're leaving the slow work and then you go up to four five up you wouldn't call a bob there because that would affect you you wouldn't call a bob at the six seven up or six seven down because that would affect you but then it says call a pair of bobs for the cue which is the the two bells when you're going in quick so you put the call in there another can call in there and then basically you go four five up and when you get to six seven up it will come round and that concept of calling yourself in these positions although it's written out from the seventh calling yourself in those positions you can do that off any bell now i've it's written out here from the treble because it's ever so slightly tricky. You just need to remember that, of course, the Q position when you're going in quick, that is the treble starts halfway through that. The treble is actually at lead there. So the Q, the second of the pair of bobs of the Q comes straight away if you're calling it from the treble. So you would go, go Stedman, Bob just as you were leaving lead, which you often hear, don't you? Um, it's very common to put a bob at one is what it's, is what it's um, colloquially referred to. So you've done the second of your pair of cues there, then you do your S, then you do your L, and then you actually need to sort of finish off the first pair of the, the bobs for the cue there, and then it will come round. And similarly, if you're, um, if, if you're um, starting, um, uh, if you're starting, um, you know, on in, in on the second or the third or anything like that, you need to work out where you are relative to to when these bobs might come. Um, and then another touch. This is, I think, arguably a simpler touch. This is a two course touch, 168 of seven triples. Basically, you call yourself from any bell in in qu in quick Q. So in quick twice. So um, I haven't actually got it written out, but um, uh, let me, if, if it was the seventh, you'd basically do all of this work unaffected. You wouldn't put any bobs in, all of this work. And then when you come to come in quick, you'd shove two bobs in there, four, five down on the way out quick. And then it wouldn't come around there because you need to start up here and doing all again and do it the second time. Um, because that's one cue and then another cue and then it would come round. And again, similarly, the thing to watch for if you are on the treble is your part way through the queue. So if you wanted to do your nice, simple one of um, calling yourself in quick um, twice for your two course touch, you go go, Stubman, Bob, and that finishes 
the second second of the pair and you go through all of this unaffected and then you put a bob in there and that finishes off that pair you'd lead quick and then you'd do another one um if if you like as you come out quick and and then go all that and do another one on the way in so you have to put sort of basically four calls in but it's wrapped around your starting point if that makes sense so you just have to watch ever so slightly in terms of which bell you do it from but they they apply to all but you know then just sometimes not yet kind of part way through a piece of work if that makes sense and i would say that's about the extent of my ability to call steadman um yeah so uh, and probably that's all you would ever need in, in, in anything in Cumbria, unless you were sort of ringing a uh, you know a peel or an, or a quarter or anything, is just to be able to try these two simple touches. And I think that's the end of the end of the end of the talk. So Andrew, hopefully you've got some helpful hints about some of this as well, have you? Um, I've tried to feed them in the, on the way where I can. I okay. think. I think one of the challenges when you start ringing bobs that affect you at the back is knowing when you've finished. For example, if you've ended up dodging eight times with the same bell, you both have to remember to count to count to eight then. Mm. And I very much recommend that splitting it up into two and one and then two and one. Yeah. And then, you know, two and one again. Um, the only thing I can think of looking at this slide, which Julie has helpfully gone back to, is the bell in four or five down, or it is more likely probably to remember the number of dodges that it needs to do, because it's only doing two dodges, you're trying to do eight dodges. You might be at the end of your um eighth dodge and thinking was that my seventh dodge or my eighth dodge or my ninth dodge and the only one way i possibly look is to see that bell disappearing from four or five down towards the lead and sometimes you can anticipate even though you've only got two or three blows to anticipate that that means you've got to finish your dodges i can't think of any other way of doing that i don't know whether you can julia no, I mean, I, I literally every time just divide them up into they're the two dodges for my double dodge. And that's the dodge for the bob. I just that's how I've always done it in 40 years of ringing. Stedman is just it's never one big, long, one big, long set of double dodges. I always, always know. Right. That's my two. That's the one. That's my two. That's the one. And, and, and you can just keep repeating that however many calls come. That's that's what I do. Because you haven't got a hope in hell of counting eight, frankly. <laughs> well, I, I haven't. So, but, um, yeah. Okay. Right. So, 